Hello everybody, today I'm going to explain the second problem of the day chosen by the people in my Discord server, which is the Vita and Strange Lesson from the Code for Speed Run 430, Vision 2. This problem is quite interesting because it involves a function which doesn't appear too often in problems, which is the max function. Basically, max represents the smallest non-negative number which doesn't occur in a step. We are given some queries and some array and at each query we need to sort all the numbers from the array with a certain value and then return the max for that new array. Even though this straightforward approach solves the problem in O and M, it's not enough since it will give us time limit exceeding. Now I'm going to show you a clever way to solve it without using too many complicated data structures like the editorial suggests. Let's move on to explaining the solution. Here I added four important observations which will help you solve the problem easily. First observation, which is the most obvious one, is that only distinct elements matter. This can be easily seen by the fact that two numbers which are equal will always behave in the same way, thanks to how the XOR function works. The second observation is that we can use prefix sums in order to compute how many numbers are in a certain range, because we don't have uh, other updates than the update suggested by the store function. The third observation, which in my opinion is the most important, is that we can store the query values and then do the storing with the array value. The proof is quite simple and it's based on the fact that store operation is associative. The last observation is that uh, this solution is based on a binary search approach. Well, it's not a pure binary search approach, but the approach is quite similar because it involves dealing with powers of two. And it's like a reverse binary search since we extend the range instead of shrinking it. Now I'm going to explain more exactly how this works. So, at some step, uh, we are going to start with a range of length 1. And at some step, we are going to deal with the bit on the position i from the store number. If at some position we miss some number, this can be uh, checked with prefix sums uh, in constant time. We are going to solve the problem for that new range. Otherwise, we are just going to extend the range based on bit i and the initial XOR value. Like if we have the bit on position i, we are going to extend it to the left. Otherwise, we are going to extend it to the right. Why does this work? Well, it works because if you uh, write on the paper for some number all the values of the bit by XOR with that number, you will see some ranges which are increasing and they are based on the uh, bits on the position i and whether they are 0 or 1. This uh, idea gives us an O of q log squared n solution if you decide not to use any other structure or if you want to exercise your three abilities the complexity will end up being O Q log N. Now I'm going to explain for an example how does this work. Here I took the, one of the samples from the problem and one of the queries from that sample. Here I described how the prefix sum will look like. Well, it's a zero index uh, prefix sum array and not an one index array as you are used with my implementation style. Here I explained using a table how will the variables 
change based on the steps from the binary search. At the beginning, the XOR is going to be equal to 1, which is the value of the query. Then we are at step 0, and the range is a range of length 1. Now, uh, since we have the bit, uh, the number on position 1, as you can see with the prefix sum, we won't stop the algorithm. And we are going to extend the range on the left because we have bit 0 in XOR value. Now, at the second range, as you can see, we have the bit, we have both numbers, but instead we are going to extend the range to the right because we don't have bit 1 in our store. However, at the step 2, we don't have all the numbers in the range since the fifth sum at the position 3 is just 2, it should have been 4, and we are going to change the value of the store, which is 3. Because one XOR uh, 2 is 3. And if we stop at some step i, we are going to XOR the number with the value at the previous position, which in case is 2 at 1. Now, for the new XOR value, we also modify the range and the step number. And since we don't have 3 in our array, we are going to return 3 and then store the value with the query value, which will return us 2. Now, another thing you may ask is what happens if we may have to extend the range at some subsequent store? Well, we are going to use the original XOR value because that value is going to be the value which decides the uh, orientation of the range, like whether we go to the left or go to the right. Now I'm going to show you my submission and how this can be implemented in 10 minutes. Here I read the input and created the prefix sum array. Now I'm going to update the source sum for some query and then call the function which solves us this problem. Well, as you can see, this function is a recursive one because it's easier to implement it like this. Here I explain how uh, I start with the range of length 1, and then I'm going to check the condition. The only thing you should be aware of is that we may have some of the variables equal to 0, so we should avoid undefined behavior. Now, if we miss some number, we are either going to return the current value of the left position, or we are going to solve the problem for the number stored by the value of the previous step, as you have seen in my sketch part. Now, if we don't miss some number, we are just going to extend it on the left or on the right based on the value of the bit and on the value of the original XOR. So, in the end, you will have some simple solution which will help you solve this problem D, which is labeled as a 2100 problem. If you liked watching this video, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, press the bell button, and also join the Discord server in order to be the first one to uh, have updates regarding my videos and my project. Until the next time, good luck. Good and goodbye.